okay? Audhu billahi bismillahi inna waliyullahu sallallahu ala muhammad al-fatiha bismillahi rahman rahim alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen ar-rahman rahim malik yawm deen iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in ilina sirata mustaqim sirata latina lam ta'alayhim ghayl maghdubi alayhim wala dolin allahumma salli ala sayyidina muhammad al-fatihi lima uglika wal katimi lima sadaka Nasir al-Haqi bil-Haqi wal-Hadi la siratika mustaqim wa ala alihi haqa qadrihi wa miqdar al-Azim Barakfi shiki wa barak Assalamu alaikum, love and light, peace and blessings to all who came out in the cold in Germany It is truly a blessing to be invited here to the Oasis Center. Uh, the Oasis Center has been in existence for hundreds of thousands of years and has landed here in Germany. Uh, I feel like, not I feel like, I know I have found a home in Germany with uh, our beloved Prim, Toby, and the barista, Brother Thomas, <laughs> <laughs> I will go to Spain. <laughs> That's a, another teaching, but <laughs> it's truly warm hearts and pure souls that we have found in Germany. So it's a blessing to be here. Uh, we will start this evening with a dose of chanting. The chanting will first begin with... Uh, the words are stock for Allah. Stock. Astag for Allah. Astag. Astag for Allah. For Allah. For Allah. Astag for Allah. And it means, uh, uh, on the outward meaning, it means I seek forgiveness from Allah for all of my negative thoughts, words, and actions. But this word, astag for Allah, always also means to turn your heart to the divine. It's, it's the beginning of the Sufi path is to turn from going toward the world to seeking divinity with inside of your heart. So you may see a hundred books on the Sufi path. 99 of them will say the first step is to say a stock for Allah, to turn your heart toward God. After turning the heart to God, uh, we recite Prayers upon Muhammad, which is Sallallahu Allah Muhammad, which means prayers be upon Muhammad. This is a, a incredible blessing because Muhammad said that uh, God sent 124,000 prophets. Can you imagine? 124,000 prophets were sent from the divine to earth. And what's beautiful is only 25 prophets are mentioned in the Holy Quran. So if there's only 25 prophets mentioned in the Quran, that means there's a possibility for other religions to be true and accepted by God. Buddhism from Buddha, Krishna, uh, Hare Krishna in the Hindu tradition, maybe Lao Tzu in his book, Tao Te Ching, could be a holy book. We don't know. But... God sent a prophet to every country speaking their language. There must be a prophet in Australia. There must be. Uh, we've had a holy woman here named Hildegard of Bingen. No telling what kind of light she brought to Germany. So when we say prayers upon Muhammad, yes, we're talking about the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, who was in Mecca and Medina, but in sending prayers on the last prophet, this is inclusive of all the prophets who came before him. And uh, that light of Muhammad is in all beings and it's also inside of us. So we send prayers on Prophet Muhammad. 
by saying Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Muhammad. And then the last one uh, is to recite La Ilaha Illallah, which is seven syllables. You see the seven? Uh, La ilaha illallah. And that's a whole <laughs> teaching just on La ilaha illallah, but it actually means uh, it means the, the coffee in in Venice is not as good as the coffee in Germany. <laughs> <laughs> really, I didn't know that. I learned so much about that. I yeah, I was I was in Ven I was in Venice a couple of weeks ago, but the coffee here, I don't know. Thomas is making. I will go to Spain. <laughs> his coffee is so good that the first time I drank it, I said, "I will go to Spain because his coffee could keep someone in Germany. It's so good." <laughs> So, la ilaha illallah has meanings of there's none worthy of worship but God. And coffee. Yes. And, and, uh, I, think, I think when we go to heaven, there, there should be some coffee there, or else it's going to be hell. No. <laughs> yes, we want to drink coffee too, but in Jen, the bark is being followed. So, the outward meaning is there's none worthy of worship but Allah, but God. But the inner meaning is Allah, the divine being God, is the only being that exists. So when you're saying la ilaha, you're saying nothing is real. Everything I'm seeing is coming from my mind. And then when you say illallah, you're saying that which is beyond the mind, God, is real. So it's a great uh, affirmation of the divine presence existing in a state of eternity without the idea of other creations existing other than God. This is a very metaphysical concept to say that Allah is the only reality or God is the only reality. In the Buddhist and Hindu traditions, you hear the word Maya. Maya is meaning everything is an illusion except for Brahman. So in the Sufi tradition, we have the same teaching. Everything is an illusion except for the divine being that we call Allah. So these are the three chants we'll do. And because we have drums, after the first three chants, we may do some improvisation with different names of Allah, Ya Rahman, the Merciful, Ya Rahim, Compassionate, Ya Wadu, the All Loving, Ya Latif, the Subtle Energy. And we will just enjoy the chanting of the divine names. We have even more instruments there, like small instruments, and who likes? It's like the can just we can put it in the middle, can just take one, uh -huh. one drum or something like this if you like. Mm -hmm. Okay, what you feel, uh, you like to use, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, fine. Mm -hmm. And also, drums and, uh, <laughs> and uh, after we do the first 100 of stock for a lot. Turning the heart to Allah, I will read a poem called uh, Stock for Allah Bihi, a poem written by our master, Sheikh Ahmed Bamba, from Tuba that cleans everything like bleach on a t-shirt. So we'll do 100 Stock for Allah, then read this aside and continue with the chanting. Any questions before we get started? Okay. So we start with turning the heart. <coughs> with, um, what yeah. would you suggest for beginners? Would you uh, suggest um, it's better uh, if they cannot sing and play an instrument uh, together, then the singing is, of course, probably better, right? Yes, I think she's correct. If, if, it's your, if you're not used to doing uh, two things at once and you just want to chant along, you can because... She is an incredible drummer. Her, she's playing the drums, and I'm like, oh, yes, please play the drums during the chanting. And, you know, uh, our Sufi tradition comes from West Africa, from Senegal. So in uh, one time, one of the uh, Muslim people who were saying, oh, music is haram, music is forbidden. And uh, he asked my sheikh in Senegal, he said, why do you drum when there's prayers. And my sheikh gave an answer that's unbelievable. He said, this is Africa. There's going to be some drumming. 
So he didn't try to get into a philosophical philosophical debate with the Sheikh. He just said, listen, we're in Africa. We're going to play the drums. I don't know what you are talking about. So <laughs> drumming is a part of the worship, and, and uh, especially with the Bifal. Sheikh Ibn Afal tradition in Senegal, there's going to be some drumming. So we're happy to have uh, a, a very good drummer here in Germany. So we start with the hundred of Stafarullah. Astaghfirullah, 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 Astaghfirullah. A
فهم لي أما وزن لي أما وأملا وأدبا وفهما ربي لكسي شؤوب منافيا وجاهيات من سكائن مانيا لكسي فليا أصر الوضع وامدا يا خير من كشي فصيرا غامدا وزما جميع ما تفارك اللدا خاتيم من آخري وصافي القلدا لكل لدى تفخر لدى ميا ربي بكم وتسيما كلاميا هبلي يا أكرم في تلاوة خيرا كثيرا منك والهلاوة بريك لي اللهم في حياتي وتعرف أهلي وتنال آياتي هبلي كوني بشرة كل من يتوب وليت ظاهرة أبين ما الغيوب قبولا نكون به تهيرا من زنا ذنوبي والمآس والأفاتي حتى أكل الجنة التي ودام تكون برحمتك يا رحمن يا رحيم صلى الله على محمد prayers be upon Muhammad a hundred times Sallallahu ala Muhammad 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 Sallallahu ala
Thank you. A call to peace before La ilaha illallah. You know, recite Ya Salam a hundred times to invoke peace from the divine. Salam is an eternal peace. It's a peace that comes from Allah. Some people get peace from games. Some people get peace from I used to get peace from going to a Chinese buffet and eating so much food, I must be honest. Mm -hmm. But peace comes from God, and that source of peace is inside of you. So we will call the name Ya Salam 100 times, and then, like, <coughs> uh, Ya Salam, 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 Yes. 
Flight 787 has just landed. You may unfasten your seatbelts and check to see if you have any objects on the plane. And, <laughs> and enjoy your destination in peace. <laughs> Maybe we can turn the lights on, inshallah. Would anyone like to share their experience during the chanting or the state of the heart and the mind? When like, chanting? Yes. What did you experience, my brother? Your voice is so beautiful. I try, you know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <It's not easy. coughs> to fully let go. <laughs> We're supposed to, especially yeah, in the zikr. It gets better and better. Mm, Allah, Allah. I try to take all the levels, you know. The, the archetypes. Mm. It's just difficult, but yes. it's good. He says he lets go in the zikr. We are supposed mm -hmm. to be free. Yes. Anyone else? I'm only here. I'm only here. Only here. As they say, uh, be here now. <laughs> be present in the now. Mm. I feel very happy, for example, and I start laughing a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely a blissful feeling. <laughs> Can I have some more of that? Happiness. Ooh. That's prices. Yeah. The as uh, uh, in some traditions in Sanskrit, they say that God is uh, Satchiananda, bliss. Bliss is one of the attributes of the divine. So when we call the divine names, we, we go into a state of bliss very often. Do you know the word Tatvamasi? Thou art that. Yeah. Tatvamasi, yes. We... Uh, I, Allah forgive me, but I have recited quite a few mantras in my day. Tadvam Asi, thou art that. Yes. This is a very good one. Mm -hmm. mm. And Tatvasat. It's difficult to accept for the mind. No? <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that we are that. Whoosh. Yes. Uh, anyone else? It's mag magnificent and it's happy and it's uh, li light, light, mm. light, 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 and uh, it's love. It's, it's so many in, in, in this in this moment. Yes. There and is so much magnificent. <sighs> so many yeah. words of expressing yeah. from the chanting. Yes. One thing I like is. Chant and be happy. Chant and be happy. There's a verse in the Quran that says, Allah bi zikri lahi tatma'inu kulu. Surely, by the remembrance of Allah, the hearts are brought to peace. So if you're ever having a stressful day, or maybe you had a long day at work and your mind is going about and you want to find peace, we say chant and be happy. Even if you don't know how to chant la 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 la, or you don't know a stock for la or salallahu la Muhammad, the Quran says, "Just remember God, and you will have peace." Allah, Allah, <coughs> Allah. Just by saying the name Allah, it will bring you to peace. So today, we want to talk about a very important topic, which is the four lights 
inside of the heart, which is an advanced teaching. We have four chambers in the heart and inside of each chamber, there is a light. So in order to arrive at this advanced teaching, we want to start with a basic introduction into the Sufi path. What is the Sufi path? How do we travel the path? What have the, the masters said about Sufism that we can put into practice in order to arrive at the station of the heart? Because some people say from the heart, from the mind to the heart is a million miles. <laughs> My mind to the heart could be a million miles. The mind says, I want hamburgers. <laughs> no, I want pizza. No, I want coffee made by Thomas. I want to be enlightened. I want to be enlightened. <laughs> <laughs> so all of this is coming from the mind. But if you ask a thousand people or a hundred people to point to yourself, where do you point? If I ask you point to yourself, where do you point, my friend? Where would you point? Most human int uh, intuition is through the eyes. To see through the eyes, okay. Yes, the Allah. <clears throat> the Sufis say only Allah can see Allah. So this is a profound statement. Allah is looking at herself through your eyes. This is a profound statement. To see that Allah is looking at Allah. Because Allah says, I am the only one that has sight. So the divine is beholding the divine, but we think these are my eyes. This is my sight. But this is actually the sight of the divine because one of Allah's names is Asami. Asami is the all hearing. Al-Basir is the all-seeing. Thomas, if you point to yourself, where would you point? Here. Where, the heart. Why do you point to the heart? Um, I think um, I will go, I will <laughs> go my way with my heart. Yes. My heart, yes. This and and in, in, in the uh, other side, I know my my uh, head say it. Will, uh, I will do it. Uh -huh. And uh, in other moments, I do it not. Uh -huh. yes. um, but I, I know I will feel it with my heart. That's Allah, Allah. Yes. And and you know, Sufism is the path of the heart. It's the path of the heart. Uh, one of the great masters has said. Um, a master from the West named Noble Dwali. Noble Dwali says, the closest place to meet Allah is inside of your heart. The closest place to meet Allah is in the heart. That's why a lot of people, when they think of themselves, they point here. Because you are actually a light form, a light existing inside of the heart in one of the four chambers. And what's amazing is Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, Muhammad the Prophet said, imagine this, Muhammad said, Allah does not fit into the universe. He said, Allah does not fit into the heavens or the earth. But he said, Allah lives inside of the heart of the believer. So your heart is the house of God. <clears throat> so you point here to yourself, oh my gosh, and here for the divine being. So you have to ask yourself, who am I? Who am I? One of the best, most profound questions a human being can ask is who am I? Katifam Asi. You are that. You are that being that you are seeking. Imagine that. You are that being which you are seeking. That 
part of yourself that is seeking God, that is God. The part of your nature that says, I want to be pure, I want to reach Allah, that is Allah. And in the Bible, God made it so simple. In the Old Testament, Moses says to God, what is your name? The answer comes back, I am that I am. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. God says, I am that I am. The people of metaphysical esoteric doctrines have said, when Allah says, I am that I am, the divine being is saying, I am that state of I am that exists inside of you. I am that I am consciousness that you think is you. That's actually me. I am that I am. Anytime you say I am, that's the God's name. That's God's name is I am. So that state of I am is inside of your heart. Now, the Sufi masters have said, well, let me be specific. My master, my teacher, my sheikh in Africa said, Sheikh Abdullah Farmi said that the entire Sufi path is purification of your soul. He said the entire path is what we call in Arabic, Taskia to nafs. Can you say this Arabic word? Taskia. Taskia. To nafs. Nafs. The self. Taskia. To nafs. Taskia means to purify. Nafs is yourself. So. The path is a path of purification of the self so that the self and the blocks can be removed for that being of Allah to manifest. Because the being of Allah is already present with you, inside of you. Allah says in the Quran, when they ask about me, I am near. And then there's another verse in the Quran where Allah says, I'm closer to you than your double name. <coughs> How can God be closer to you than the vein in your neck? That's pretty close. So we have the idea that I am separate from God. We have the idea that God is up in the sky somewhere. So this idea has to be removed from the mind. It has to be purified. We have been traveling on this path for some time, doing some research inside of ourself, and we found that I will go to Spain. No, but we found that in order to purify the heart, you have to first purify the mind. Because whatever is in your mind will eventually manifest inside of your heart. You keep thinking about that new Apple phone. Man, I want that Apple phone. Man, I need that Apple 95 phone. I need the Apple 95. What are they on? Apple 6, 7 now? In the future, they'll have the Apple 95. I need this new Apple phone. You think about it so much, the phone will be inside of your heart now. Now you're in love with this phone. I'm obsessed with the phone. When can I get this new Apple phone? So we have to purify the mind from thinking of other things other than God putting our mind on the divine. So purification of the mind will lead to purification of the heart. And the way to purify the heart is to say, La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah is the purifier for the heart. Muhammad, the prophet, peace be upon him, he said, for everything, there is a purifier. And he said, the purifier of your heart is to say, La ilaha illallah. This La ilaha illallah is a polish for the heart. 
we have this window is very clean, but if there was mud or dirt on the window, you couldn't see the outside. The heart is the window to the heavens. The heart is the window to the unseen world that we call heavens. When your heart is defiled or your heart is full of pollution from the world, you don't see the divine being. When you begin to recite la 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 la, it's like you're taking some soap and water and polishing your heart. When you polish the heart, just like you polish the window, boom, the sunlight comes through. But with the heart, the sunlight doesn't come through, the light comes out. Because Allah is already there inside of your heart. So when we speak of the four lights in the heart, now I received this teaching from Sheikh Bao Mahayadeen. Sheikh Bao Mahayadeen uh, has a book called The Inner Secrets of Sufism and the Triple Flame of Sufism. He talks about this teaching in his book. He's saying that uh, the, the heart has four chambers. He said, the human being is a light. We are light forms. E equals MC squared. You are a light, not the physical body. You are a light that lives inside of the cavity of your heart. The four lights are, the first light is the light of yourself. The second light is the light of your spiritual guide, the light of the master. The third light is the light of the prophet that you are following. In our case, we're following Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And then the fourth light is the light of Allah, the divine being. All of these lights are inside of you. The light of yourself, you are a light form. Your teacher, your spiritual guide is a light being. All the prophets that came were light beings. And Allah is a light being called Nur, light. So this journey is a journey of the unification of the four lights in the heart. The journey is a unification of the four lights in the heart because first you think, I'm separate from my teacher, who is separate from Muhammad, who is separate from Allah. But when you get to the essence of it, there's only one light. There's only one light. If you have a prism and you shine a, a light through a prism, seven rays of color will come out on the other side of the prism but there was one light that traveled through the prism producing rays of light. So we think Angela is a light. We think the Sheikh is a light. We think Prophet Muhammad is a light and Allah is a light and these three lights are separate. But in reality, the light of yourself, the light of your guide, the light of the prophets, Muhammad, and the light of Allah is one light, is one light. So when you do the recitation of la ilaha illallah, the recitation of la ilaha illallah will cause you to say, wait, the light of my master and my light are one. There's one light in my teacher and one light in me. This is the same light. Then you will come to realize you keep polishing the heart. You'll say, wait. My light, the light of my master, and Nur Muhammad, the light of Prophet Muhammad, is the same light in different forms. You have ice, water, and steam. Ice, water, and steam is all water, but it's manifesting in different forms. Then you get to a point where you realize, wait a minute, my light, the light of my teacher, the light of Muhammad and the light of Allah are one. So you go into a, a state of oneness with Allah 
by realizing that you are a being of light first. I am light. Tatvam Asi. I am that which I am seeking. Once you realize that you are light, you have to find a spiritual guide to take initiation with the guide. When you find the guide and take a, a bayat or a link with the guide who is light, that guide will give you teachings and practices to purify the mind and the heart even more. And those practices that you receive from the guide will take you to the station of the prophets. We know, according to Islamic doctrine, that Muhammad is what we call Nur Muhammad, light. Nur, Allah, Nur. Allah said the first thing I created was the light of Prophet Muhammad. This Nur, this light of Muhammad was in Adam. The light of Muhammad was in Solomon. The light of Muhammad was in Jesus. The light of Muhammad was in David. The light of Muhammad was in the prophet Solomon. The light of Muhammad was in Buddha. The light of Muhammad was in Krishna. That light of Muhammad is in you. And that light of Muhammad came to manifestation through the last prophet that we call Muhammad. So it's all about light. You could say the Sufi path is a path of light, a path of cultivation of divine light. Because every time you recite any prayer in Arabic, these are prayers of light. If you say, Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim this is a prayer of light. If you say, Astaghfirullah, this is a prayer of light. If you say, Sallallahu alayhi Muhammad, this is a prayer of light. If you say, La ilaha illallah, this is a prayer of light. If you just say the name Allah, 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 this is a prayer of light. We can shorten the Sufi teachings. The Sufis have said, say the name Allah until you become what you're saying. Hmm. Say the name Allah until you become what you're saying. Meaning, this being Allah must penetrate your consciousness and remove all other entities from your being until only Allah is there. One aspect of the Sufi path that we have to mention is the Sufi path is a path of love. Love, love, love. I'm in the mood for love <laughs> simply because you're near me. I'm in the mood for loving Allah because I know that Allah is near me. Allah is not a being way in the sky somewhere. Allah is a being that's giving you life that lives inside of your heart. My master told me the only one closer to Allah than you is the one who has more love for Allah. The only one closer to God <coughs> than you is the one who has more love for God. This divine love is what gives you a connection to Allah. I want to ask someone here, why do you think that love is the connecting point between the human being and God? Why? Why, why, why not wisdom? Why not knowledge? Why is love the connecting point between you and the divine being. I have a little answer, but it comes from from Reiki. Okay. And um, with the, uh, it's connected with the chakras. Okay. And there is like this um, 
this light, um, how do you say, what the Yiddish people use, the uh, with the with the, with the seven candle. Ah, okay, okay, I, okay. I, I I think it's called the Sakina or the light of God, but I'm not sure. Um, like it's a, it's like a um, something that stands, and it has the connection uh, over the center, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then it goes. I, I would love to to um, to show you one. It, it kind of looks like this, right? No, it's different. <laughs> I saw probably, one. Probably you continue your teaching, and I'm. It has seven I just, candles. I just yes, seven candles, but uh, it's very important how it looks in the in the middle. And then I can explain. Okay, okay. I saw one in here somewhere. I know where it, where it's. Okay, one. so love is the connecting point between you and the divine, because one of Allah's names is Al Wadud. Love is one of God's qualities. This yes, I think. Uh, yes, okay. When when God is love, yeah, God is the way to God love. It, it's not even a, a metaphysical deep is, principle. Is, yes. Brother says God is love, so the way to God is love. And once you tap into that love, you have arrived. There's no there's no separation between love and lover. Then then between the beloved, as Jalaluddin, Jalaluddin Rumi says, the lover and the beloved are one. So just by having love for the divine, you are already in a state of oneness with Allah through this love for Allah, because Allah is love. Yes. It looks like this. Mm -hmm. And in the center is the heart. Allah. <laughs> and you see this is connected to everything. Mm -hmm. Like here, is the, if, the, if you put it like this, this is here um, and the... Uh -huh. The chakra the seven here, chakras. the second uh -huh. chakra here is the third eye, here is the um, throat, uh -huh. here is the heart, here is solar plexus, mm -hmm. here is the sacral chakra, and there's the um, beneath the root chakra. Mm -hmm. And it's all only working through the heart because it's going here mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. over the heart. And this is seven seven they have a name for, what is that's called a menorah no there's a name for that in hebrew but i can't remember the name there's a name for this in hebrew <laughs> seven so we are traveling on the path of love unifying the four lights with the knowledge that the light of the self, the light of the spiritual guide, the light of Muhammad, and the light of Allah is one light manifesting in four different forms inside of your heart. And by purification through la ilaha illallah, the Bifal say the beginning of the path is la ilaha illallah, and the end of the path is to recite la ilaha illallah. So anytime you begin to recite la ilaha illallah and you're reciting this with a love for Allah, you have engaged in the Sufi path. You have put your feet on the path just by starting with la ilaha illallah. Because in la ilaha illallah, you're actually saying, I don't exist, only Allah exists. And that being a lie exists as your true self. We have seen that I set on a journey to find God and I found myself. I set out on a journey to find God and I find myself. 
And then when I set out on a journey to find myself, I found God. <laughs> this is a Sufi proverb. The Sufis say, I went on a journey to found God. Ooh, and I found myself. Then I said, okay, I'm going to go, go on a journey to find myself. Ooh, and I found God. So this sheikh named Sheikh Sufi came with an idea that said, God is playing a strange game of hide and seek with himself. Do you know what hide and seek is? What is hide and seek? Like, uh, suchen und finden, also sowas wie Versteck spielen. Versteck spielen. Yeah. Yeah. God is playing hide and seek with himself. Looking for himself. <laughs> But you're in the way of the game. You are blocking God from finding himself in you. So, since God is looking for God and you're in the way, The Sufis say you have to die before you die. Mm -hmm. Die before you die. The ego means to ease God out. I don't know if you heard that in Germany because this is English. But the, your ego is separating you from God because you think I exist. When we heard the brother say, Tatvam Asa, you are that. But your ego is, is ruining the hide-and-seek game of God. <laughs> God is trying to find herself. You keep getting in the way. God is trying to find herself. You keep showing up. <coughs> You're not ruining it, right? Huh? If he wants to play hide-and-seek, I'm just what needs to be there in the middle, right? Yes. In the middle, like, ha-ha, very funny. You can't find me. <laughs> But one master says, When, when I am there, God is not there. Baal Mahayadeen says this. Baal Mahayadeen says, when I'm there, God is not there. And he says, when I'm not there, God is there. I think I exist. This is a separation from God. I say I'm going to die and get rid of my ego. I remember one uh, disciple few years ago, she came to Sheikh Sufi and took her initiation. She do, was doing the practices. She, she called me and said, Sheikh, I feel like you're killing me. Literally. She was nervous. She was like, Sheikh, I think, I think you're killing me. I feel like I'm going to die. And I was like, wait, 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 sister. No, 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 no. I'm, this is it's not a physical death. I was like, it's going to be a death of your old self. I had to reassure her that it's not a physical death. She was really like, the practices are changing me. You have me saying this. I feel like you're trying to kill me. I said, I am trying to kill you. <laughs> But I'm trying to kill the ego inside of you so that God can live as you. So, we can, I don't want to say that. People might not think it's funny. <laughs> But the sheikh is a murderer. <laughs> He killed, my sheikh killed thousands of people. 